These cultures, they're aquatic plant cultures. They are native to the state of Texas. They're floating leaved, which include water lilies, and they're emergent plants, which include species like bull tongue or smartweed. And then there's also submerged species, which include wild celery, water stargrass, Illinois pondweed, and American pondweed. Started with a partnership with the Seven Coves Bath Bass Club and Texas Parks and Wildlife, uh, along with the San Jacinto River Authority, and the Seven Coves Bass Club came out. They built these uh, culture boxes with uh, specifications from LARF, which is Louisville Aquatic Ecosystem Research Facility uh, guidance. And then LARF provided the propagules for the startup. They made pots, we planted them up with the different species of plants and the goal is to be able to use this sustainable nursery in Lake Conroe. The importance of uh, installing native plants on Lake Conroe is to provide habitat for the fishery. It, it also uh, helps to reduce erosion problems that may occur with the absence of any vegetation out there and it also occupies a niche that otherwise might be open for plants such as hydrilla which is an invasive species that we don't want in Lake Conroe. It creates a nursery habitat. Basically, it's like a haven for small fish that the larger fish can reproduce and then the small fish have a chance to hide away from the larger predators, which they don't really have that right now. Stress the importance of the partnerships between Texas Parks and Wildlife, San Jacinto River Authority, and the Louisville Aquatic Ecosystem Research Facility and the Seven Coast Bass Club. Without the help of the Bass Club or just the partnership in, in general, a lot of the work, well most of the work wouldn't get done. This is a giant bulrush, Skinoplectus californicus. It is an emergent plant, it grows pretty tall. It is one of the species that we've chosen for use in Lake Conroe because it, it seems to be able to handle the fluctuations in water levels that we know that Lake Conroe. The idea is that we want to plant mature, robust plants out in the field. So we started out, we made large six inch pots, filled them with sediment, fertilized them with the appropriate amount of, of fertilizer, came back in, planted plugs, small plugs of this plant, and then within about four weeks, then you have this plant. It's about nearly ready to go into the field, but then we also have these other plants. They're a little bit older, like this giant bull rush here <clears> that is most definitely field ready. It is root bound, it's ready to go into the field, and this plant is better able to withstand the conditions, low high water levels, wave action, herbivore uh, pressure than just a plug would. A, a small two inch plug is not going to be able to handle the conditions that this robust potted mature plant, once planted, will be able to endure. Giant bulrush, an example of an emergent. This is an example of a floating leaf species. This is American water lily. It has a very attractive white flower. It shades the water basically and provides a different kind of habitat structure than the emergent species. This plant is rooted into the sediment and it sends up lily pads. These were also um, planted up from small propagules and then now we have this box is full of these six inch plants sending up new leaves, very mature, uh, root bound, roots coming out the bottom able to withstand the adverse conditions of Lake Conroe. Um, this species actually makes a rhizome that can handle complete desiccation for short periods of time, which is perfect for this lake. The next species that we chose for use in Lake Conroe is wild celery. And wild celery is a truly submerged species, meaning that its roots are rooted into the sediment and it sends up blades or leaves that stay just below the water's surface. What we like about wild celery is it's somewhat resistant to herbivore damage other than turtles, which is another reason why we want to protect these plants when they get out into the field. 
wild celery. <clears throat> Sends out little daughter plants, which are basically clones, and it'll fill up this entire pot, and this pot is ready to go into the field. It's mature, it's got plenty of roots, and once in the field, the idea is that it'll spread out radi radially to fill an exclosure. Most of these are ready to go. They just got a little algae on them. Um, the other species that we have that uh, will also be kind of one of our workhorse species is this emergent water willow. And one of the things that we really like about water willow is it can handle being inundated. It will elongate its stems to be able to reach the water's surface. It will handle periods of desiccation. It can handle being nibbled on by deer or uh, crayfish or carp. It's kind of considered a carp resistant uh, plant. And the reason why the root crown on this plant is very robust and it is able to handle, if somebody were to come along and clip off these leaves or uh, stems above ground, it will just send up new shoots from this root crown. And then these new stems, or these stems that uh, may break off or, or wash away, they will root at the nodes. So each one of these will go off and create a new plant. So, and it's very easy to propagate, which you can just stick the stems right back down in the sediment, each node roots, and then we have a new plant. This plant is water smartweed. It's an emergent plant, but the bonus about this plant is it will also make submerged leaves whenever necessary. So when the water levels come up, it makes submerged leaves, it can handle it. When the water levels go down, it makes these emergent leaves and then it can handle periods of desiccation. Used pretty heavily by waterfowl. They, they like to, to chew on the leaves and the seeds and whatnot. Um, and then in addition to that, it's also providing structure uh, as, a, as like a nursery environment for small fish. But these were just newly planted from sprigs just a couple of weeks ago, these ones down here. These ones are more mature. It also roots at the node, which makes it, uh, whenever the stems become mobile, they can form roots at the nodes at wherever they land. And then in addition to that, it's just a really robust root crown, sprawling species of plant. All of these right here are ready to go in the field. And it's super easy to propagate. All you gotta do is tear that off, stick it into a pot. So this species is, uh, has the common name bull tongue or delta arrowhead. It's a Sagittaria. And one of the other common names for it is duck potato because it makes all these little tubers. And the ducks will come in and they'll dig them up and they eat them. And each tuber, this is one of the reasons why this one's good for uh, changes, uh, drastic changes in, a, in water levels is that these tubers will sit until conditions are ripe again for them to uh, sprout. This is bull tongue, this is pickle weed. This species is really good at stabilizing sediments. It's also aesthetically attractive and it also pulls a lot of nutrients, excess nutrients up and, and binds them and uh, keeps them out of the water. And these are definitely ready to go. Very mature root bound, ready to go in the field. They're planted up just like you would something that you bought from Lowe's or Home Depot. You just take them out of the pot, which I may not be able to get this one out. You dig a hole big enough for this portion, which we call the root ball, and then you just kind of put a little sediment over on top of it and it's ready to go. This plant needs to be planted right at the shoreline or in about six inches of water. It can handle a couple of feet, so we try to choose the elevations based on what we think the water levels will do for the different species. Emergence are generally 
shore right at the shoreline up to about a foot. Floating leaved, we usually put those in about a foot of water first off and then they can handle anything basically up to six feet or even a little more if they had to for small periods of time. And then the submersed, depending on the species, you can find them one foot, two foot of water or six feet deep.